Kia ora, kia ora, kia ora. Hello and welcome to this week's podcast. Today I've got a really special guest for you and if you're a teacher and you're moving to New Zealand, you are going to love this guy. Harl is a, a member of our private moving to New Zealand community. He's a science teacher in a high school in the US and he's moving over to New Zealand and he has just, literally just finished all the rigmarole that he had to go through to get his qualifications assessed by NZQA. And he just said on the chat, to us. He said, do you want me to come and just tell everyone what this is like? Because if you're a teacher, you really need to know this stuff. And he's just been through it. So it's so fresh. You are going to love Carl. Honestly, I just... I could just listen to him all day. His accent is just lovely. The way he just, he's so, got so much energy. Like I say, if you're a teacher and you're coming to New Zealand, this is every single thing you need to know about what you go through to get here. And remember, if you want to become a, a member of our private moving to New Zealand community that is full of valuable, valuable stuff, videos and podcasts and a Slack group that is made up of wonderful people, like-minded people who are all all moving to New Zealand and are there to support each other, then sign up for our free five-day moving to New Zealand video guide. It's absolutely free and then on the fifth day you're given the option to join our paid-for private community. So that's how you become a member and be alongside the likes of Carl and every other wonderful person that's in that group. Remember, if you're moving to New Zealand and you'd like some immigration advice, the guys that we recommend, the company that we love is NZ Shores. Loads of people in our private NZ Ahead community use them and they rave about them and that's why we think they're brilliant. And the best thing about those guys is that they offer a free assessment, absolutely free. So if you're sitting there thinking, am I eligible to move to New Zealand? Use the special link, go over, fill out the form that they offer and they'll get back to you and tell you whether or not it's worth moving forward and how they can help you. So to use NZ Shores and to get that free assessment that's going to cost you absolutely nothing, go to www.nzshores.com slash Liz. I'll give you that special link again. It's www.nzshores.com slash Liz. Go over there and those guys are going to help you immensely. Right, let's jump into the show and meet Carl. Come on, come on, come on. Welcome to the NZ Ahead podcast. Everything you need to know about moving to and living in New Zealand. There's a whole world here. It's so nice to be with you again. We call Octorora on here, bro. Uh-huh. You'll be right. We are your hosts, Liz and Brian. Amazing New Zealand in the Southern Seas. See, that's where I belong. That's home. So, Carl, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you on here with us. Um, and I can't wait to dive into the whole how to become a teacher and get over to New Zealand, get a job as a teacher. And we were just saying, actually, you just said that you haven't yet got a job. Is that right? Is have you? That is correct. Yeah. I got my qualifications to become a teacher in New Zealand just 10 days ago. Well, so this is all very fresh and it's a journey. I'll tell yes. you. Yes. And I am looking forward to jumping right in there. And because there's, it was like we were just saying before we hit record, there's nothing better than when you have just finished something. You've just come out of that process and it's so fresh in your mind. And you're like, yeah, I just want to share this because you you do forget, don't you, Carl? You know, after a few months or years or whatever. Absolutely. And there's not a lot out there to help people make the transition from, you know, being a professional American teacher over to being a New Zealand teacher. So I definitely wanted to help you guys out while I still had it, you know, in my head ready to go. Yeah, right. Well, let's jump right in. So just introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about yourself and then we'll we'll jump into the to the topic. Sure. So hi, everyone. My name is Carl Butel. Um, my wife and I decided we wanted to move to New Zealand in November. Um, and I've been a teacher for 23 years here over in the States. So I've definitely, you know, gone through the process. Um, we were let known that there was a critical shortage in New Zealand for teachers. Um, and that might be an avenue for us working there. The question was, how do you transfer your knowledge and your abilities as a teacher in the States to become certified as a teacher in New Zealand. 
So it's a process, it's a slog. And I thought I'd just walk it, you know, walk everyone through this step by step if you're a teacher interested in teaching in New Zealand. Yeah, that's that's really great. So whereabouts in America do you live? I live in California, a town called Calabasas. Right. Um, it's right near uh, Malibu, Los Angeles area. Right. Okay. And you're coming to New Zealand. Is it on the 26th of June? You're coming to New Zealand? That is the plan. Um, <laughs> if I have, oddly enough, I don't have the job offer yet. And we'll talk about that stage of it at the very end. But yeah, the, the aim is for the end of June. And that has something to do about when the terms start for the New Zealand education system. Right. Do you know, Carl, I've just got to say, I've never, well, I, I have, I interviewed Ryan's wife and she's a teacher. Um, she was telling me, but I actually feel a little bit scared talking to you because <laughs> it reminds me of talking to my high school teacher when I was at school and you know, you'd know, you go in and you want to ask a question, you have to line up at the desk and ask a question because, yeah, you. I just think you, you've got a very authoritative voice and it's just, I can tell that you're a great teacher. It's just that you're taking control and I'm like, I just feel like I need to sit up straight. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. You can ask me anything and... I'm really laid back. Um, I just, yeah. yeah, I absolutely know. No, it's going to be great. It's great. It's your show. And, and once again, I want to thank you, Liz, because your podcast made everything so possible for my family to make this transition. And your Slack group is such a tremendous resource. The people on it are the best people. So thank you to everyone who's, you know, gone on your show before and helped us out. It's It's been fantastic. Oh, oh thank you for saying that, Carl. That's, uh, we appreciate that. We love having you. And uh, yeah, can't, can't wait to see you over in New Zealand. Right. Let's jump straight in and talk about the critical shortage of teachers and um, go from there and how much they get paid and things like that. I'm just going to hand it over to you. Great. OK, so the first thing you kind of go and look at is you go, you type in uh, on your Google or your web search, um, New Zealand critical shortage. And they actually have a list of all the critical shortages. And you can type in teacher and they actually have shortages in both the primary and secondary level in New Zealand. Um, now that's not terminology we use here in the States. In the States, uh, we'll talk about having um, what's called a multiple subject credential, which is your littles, that's kindergarten here through typically fifth or sixth grade. And then we have what's called a single subject credential, which is your older kids. So to translate that over to New Zealand speak, because this took me a while to figure out, um, they call primary, uh, basically one through generally six in New Zealand, and that's your multiple subject here in the States. And then your single subject is traditionally your secondary kids over in New Zealand. So just to get that term terminology across, secondary is your older, primary is your younger for what we do here. So when you, when you find that there's a critical shortage, right now it's all over New Zealand. It's one of the best ways to get into New Zealand is to be a teacher. Um, I immediately after that went into pay. And I found out that if you've been doing it for about 10 years, that's the maximum cutoff point. Um, the maximum money you make in New Zealand as a teacher is right around, from what I can find out, about eight to $9,000 per month. Right. Good news for American teachers, typically in America, we get paid um, maybe 10 or 11 months of the year. Mm -hmm. In New Zealand, they pay every single month. This was confirmed by Joe, uh, Ryan's, Ryan's wife, just the other day. And... Um, the pay in New Zealand goes towards superannuation. So we're in the States, we have a paycheck and they take out retirement. We get our money. You would get your money in New Zealand and it would head towards retirement. So you're not being deducted in that sense. So the pay is actually pretty comparable between the States and the U.S. Right. So that's good news. Yeah. So then the question is, where does our journey begin, right, as a teacher? And... Um, Believe it or not, it starts with fingerprints and a police report. Oh. <laughs> so all the teachers here in the States are fingerprinted, but you're going to need a, a copy of it, and you're going to need to send it off to our Federal Bureau of Investigation. You can type in, you know, police background check. And when you apply to New Zealand, you have to have that paperwork in order. Otherwise, you don't really go anywhere. And that's about a 15-day turnaround once you get it submitted. So that's kind of where you start off as a launching point. All right. right. Anything? To yeah. Yes. So just let me pause a minute because let me just ask a question. So first of all, because I can't believe this. So you're telling me that when you're a teacher in the US, you don't get paid for the summer holidays. The vacate, you know. Yeah, it's kind. 
Absolutely. Everyone's like, oh, you get your summers off. How lovely to be a teacher, right? And uh, we don't get paid for our summers. So when we, we get paid any month we work. So in my school, we get off in June. That's another problem, by the way, we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. And so I don't work the entire month in July, so I will not be getting a paycheck in July. Um, If I were to go back and work in August, even if I worked four days, they have to pay you in the month you work. So that was a big question I had for Joe because she actually is a teacher where I'm just now qualified to teach in New Zealand. Right, right. Carl, it'd put you off, wouldn't it, Carl? You wouldn't want to take any holidays because it'd be like, well, that's we're not going to get paid. So it's a bit of a... It's a problem. When I started teaching, um, they wouldn't pay us for two months. And you really had to budget your money. Like you get towards the end of, of your vacation. You're like, can I just start teaching now? I need money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of one of those things, but one month you can manage. Right. And I've got another question for you. You're a science teacher at the moment, aren't you? Correct. Right. Okay. Are we going to talk about this later or can I ask the question now? Because I just want to know, are you, yeah, are you applying for science teacher jobs or are you applying for any job as a teacher? And that also, is a fantastic question. Yeah. And also, are you applying for high school teachers or all primary and high school? That is literally, if you'd asked me two months ago, I would have looked at you and go, Liz, I don't know. That is such a fantastic question and a question that um, American teachers need to understand. I teach secondary school. I have a single subject credential. I'm an expert in science, right? However, in New Zealand, I'm approved pretty much to teach primary all the way up through. So if I want to go into a setting where I teach all subjects during the day, I could go do that in New Zealand, meaning I can cast a broader net for my job search. Um, Math and science teachers happen to be in high demand in New Zealand. So I will probably end up, I've been told by my advisors that I'll probably be end up landing a job as um, a science teacher in a secondary school. Okay. But that's a, that's a great question. Right. Okay. And so before we move on, and thank you for clarifying that before we move on. So before you do the fingerprints and things like that, so you look online and find the job and then you do this, or do you have to do this before you even begin to look for a job? You know, the fingerprints things and. Fingerprint and and your police record are first. So the next step, I'll take you to the next step and it will kind of become. Let's go. Let's go. The next step, and this is where it gets really tricky, requires you to log on to not one, but two separate websites. So I'm going to actually back up and, well, no, I'll explain as we go on. So one of the websites is called NZQA, or if you're an American, NZQA. Mm -hmm. And this is a board that says what you've earned, a bachelor's, a master's, a certificate, are in fact valid. So what they do and and what they spend all their time is, is they say, hey, what you have is not false. And they require all sorts of proofs in order to prove that it isn't false. So I ended up going to their site and um, you kind of, you follow the links and I'll explain a little bit more later. But basically, um, you know, I'm going to explain it now if... um, if you don't mind, just because this was, this was such a difficult part for me. So when you go to NZ uh, QA, you will actually go onto their website and it's, it's not very clear, but there's a gray bar and to the right, it will say international. Okay. And then if you scroll down, um, uh, your qual this, this kind of bar that drops down, it will give you an option to click getting overseas qualifications recognized by NZQA. I'll say that again. So you're on the website, you go to international, a drop down happens and it says getting overseas qualifications recognized. From there, it will give you the option to get your qualifications evaluated. Um, This costs money. And so I have my bachelor's degree in science. And so you'll fill out all this paperwork uh, online And at the end of it, it will say, hey, for the low, low price of X amount of dollars, I can't remember exactly, would you like another qualification um, checked out? If you have a secondary qualification, like I have my master's in administration, so I could be an assistant principal or principal over here in the States, you want to do that now. Because if you miss that 48 hours of window, and they are super strict, I called them like, I didn't understand. They're like, Oh, well, they'll just go ahead and charge you the extra two, three hundred dollars to do a second qualification. So they're going to verify your bachelor's degree. And if you have any other degrees, those degrees. 
Now, here's where Americans get very confused. And this is the big difference between a degree in New Zealand and a degree in the States. In the United States, we get a degree in a subject. So English, science, history, what have you. And then we get a certificate that allows us to teach. In New Zealand, it is flipped. You did a, you get a degree in teaching and then you get special uh, specialization to become a certified science specialist or um, a math specialist. And because of this flip, it causes all sorts of problems for Americans. Um, <laughs> did you, any questions on that? <laughs> no, no. Okay. Okay. The punchline is at the end of this road, you will fail your qualifications. And it is a bummer. You will go back and forth in submitting information to NZQA. You'll wait. You'll call them. Um, Joe gave, gave great advice on your other podcast of what it's like to be a, a teacher. You know, be persistent. Stay with it. You call them. You do all this stuff. They, they bump you up and they say, oh, we're going to prioritize you now. You know, you've waited two months, but now we're going to get to you. And you finally get that email. And it says, we've gone through your qualifications. And guess what? If you dream of moving to New Zealand, then you are going to love what I'm about to share with you. 12 years ago, when me and Bri emigrated to New Zealand, we were scouring the internet, trying to find any information that we could about what our life would be like when we got here. And basically all we had was YouTube. So we made this vow. We said, when we get to New Zealand, we're going to create something that we can share with others that answers those questions that you're so desperate to know about, like what is your life going to be like when you get here? And that's what I'm here to offer you today. We have created a five-day free, absolutely free video guide that shows you what it's really like to live in New Zealand. This stuff is unique and it is fabulous. You are not going to find it anywhere else on the internet. And like I say, it's absolutely free. You'll be sent a video every day for five days and you will know what it's like in New Zealand. So head over to the website. It's www nzahead slash free. One more time, that's www.nzahead slash free. You are going to love it. In two months, but now we're going to get to you. And you finally get that email and it says, we've gone through your qualifications and guess what? You are not approved to be a teacher. Oh no. As far as their qualifications go, because our degree is in English or in my case, science, and it's not a degree in teaching. And so they don't recognize that. This is a series of failing up to become a teacher <laughs> from the States to New Zealand. It's a little different um, in England. It's a little different in South Africa. They more closely match. But in the States and other places, it's a slog. Right. All right. I feel Any like questions? Should... No, but I feel like we should put some suspense music in, like, dun, 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 you know. <laughs> it's just like, I can't wait to hear about this. <laughs> no, go on, go ahead. <laughs> I'm all in. Okay, this. so that is your NZQA portion of this whole stuff. So there's a body that just says what you have is not false. Now, they did say my bachelor's was real. Thank you, NZQA. They said my master's was real and a master's of education but it was an educational administration. But ultimately they said, no, no, this doesn't count. They submit their stuff to the second website that I was talking about. Remember I said there's two places yes. that you go to. The second one is the teaching council. You will spend as an American uh, trying to become a teacher hours upon hours upon hours. It's like buying a house times five, the amount of paperwork. Um, You'll submit your diplomas. You'll submit your coursework. They want to know what your courses were. I took my courses 23 years ago. Yeah. Like what's when I started, they want to know what all the courses are and what they do, because what they're trying to do is figure out, are you qualified to teach in New Zealand? And they'll look through it and they'll look through it and they'll look through it. And as soon as NZQA says, Hey, your degree doesn't count. They'll come back at you and say, congratulations. You're not qualified to be a teacher. And at that point, not knowing that that's what's going to happen, you're absolutely devastated. This is when I turned to my wife and I went, 
I'm not going to New Zealand. Our dreams are shattered. Can I just turn my camera on in my classroom and be like, look, counsel, those are kids. Yeah. I'm teaching. I've been doing this for 23 years. What do you mean I can't, I can't teach in your country? So here's the silver lining. And by the way, the process is I did it in four months. I told that was kind of rapid to get my, my thing, but I think you could do it in three if you've got every duck in a row and you're super persistent. But I know people who have been at it for five and they're just getting to later stages. Oh. So once again, NZQA, it's the shorter the process. They'll reject you. The teaching council will come back at you and come back at you. You will be surprised how many times they say, thank you for your 15 hours of paperwork you submitted. Um, can we get one more thing? Can we get 10 more things? Can you notarize the fact that this diploma is valid? Uh, here's a small thing. We have notaries. Notaries don't say whether diplomas are real or not. That's not what they do. And New Zealand will be like, can you go to a judge and just say if the judge will say it's real? Our judges don't have time to talk to us and say, oh, that looks like a proper diploma to yeah, me. Yeah. Like, yeah, they yeah. don't do it. So there's like all these hoops you jump through. But the silver lining is, is they'll come back and they'll say, you're rejected. So now you've been rejected twice. And that's where I was um, at the beginning of March. And I got to tell you, it is heartbreaking, Liz, because you don't understand how terrible it is. All right. Any questions up until this point? Yes, I can. Can I put my hand up? Oh, no. There's only, yeah, yeah. Anytime. There's, there's only me and you here. That's all right. <laughs> right. I want to ask a question. You know, when you said you keep contacting them and they're like, oh, yeah, just send that. Are you doing that by phone? Did you ever phone New Zealand and speak to them? Just out of curiosity. So a lot of it was by email, but when a week went by or I didn't, um, I didn't understand something, I'd straight up call the New Zealand council. I have to say big plus for New Zealand, by the way, as, 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 as difficult as I'm making this sound, I don't want to paint a bad picture of New Zealand. Every human being I spoke to, to the last stitch was nothing but pleasant and supportive. And they're like, keep on at it, Carl. It's all part of the process. You're going to make it. And those people that I talked to really got me through. So I encourage you, if you're going through the process, give them a ring. Um, there's certain times and days where uh, it's a little bit more difficult to get through. When the borders were opening, I would sit on hold for 45 minutes to an hour and a half just to talk to a person. It's, it's loosened up now. Mm -hmm. But Liz, from your government to your recruiters to the random person at a hotel we tried to like talk, you guys are just so mellow and chill and easygoing. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's absolutely, I mean, I'm sure every country has its exceptions, but by and large, the people I've talked to have been very supportive. That's great. Okay, just to make you feel better, when I phone the bin company to ask them why they haven't been to empty my recycle, I'm I'm often on that. I'm often on hold for forty five minutes, Carl. So it's not just you. <laughs> you know oh, okay, you good. <laughs> I, I've been following your struggles with being out of district or out of zone for your bin. I think I think you have a point. I think you should get your your uh, your rubbish collected. Yeah, me too. Right. Okay. And then the second question is: You say you're going to get rejected. You're going to get rejected. Do you know anyone that has applied to the NZQA and they've got accepted, or is this just is this like a common thing? You know, is every for Americans it's common. Right. Americans, okay. you're going to get rejected. Um, Brits, you got a much easier path. They will accept some of your teachings. You'll go right in. South Africans, you'll have an easier path. Um, I can't speak for Canada, but I'm telling you right now, the way it goes in the States, you're going to get rejected. And then they're going to say, we're going to put you up to the review board because when they say you're rejected, what they're saying is, is you're not checking the easy boxes. Mm -hmm. You're outside of their normal way of doing things, but it feels like a rejection inside that they're not really saying you're rejected as a human being. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're saying you just don't fit the easy path. Yes. Now the real work begins. You've submitted 20 to 25 hours worth of work. You've said for yourself and your family for the fifth time, I've done it. I've submitted the last of the paperwork. And they say, all right, we want you to submit and it's a portfolio. We're talking, find the course description of every single college class you've ever had. Um, your evaluations as a teacher. So I taught, I started 23 years ago. They asked me if I had my handwritten evaluations from 23 years ago from my original teachers so I could prove that I was evaluated. Liz, 
<laughs> insane as this sounds, because you know, you're like, you're a little flighty, Carl. Yeah, I'm, I'm ADD to the core. Um, <laughs> I had a course where the teacher made me collect all those things and stick them in a folder. And she's like, one day you're going to need this. And I had it all. So I got lucky. Um, I submitted more work and I created links and the degree that I had didn't exist at UCLA anymore. So I had to, I had to write them. Hey, counsel, um, this is what it is. But I, I met a lovely lady on the phone who told me at the teaching council, the more you submit, the more likely you are to make it. And she said, hang in there, Carl. This happens to a lot of like a lot of you. This is this is the final step. You can do it. And I said, OK. And I got a letter from my advisor, Karen, who we have 20, 40 emails back and forth of the course. And she says, all right, the council meets um, at the first week of every month and then the following week we will let you know. So I got this around March 23rd. I kind of did my math and somewhere around the second week of April, just a couple of weeks ago for me, um, I heard from the council and they said, congratulations, you're approved to be a teacher. And I was like, you know, break out the martini glasses and the wine in this house. And due to your 23 years of teaching, we'll take one year off your supervised teaching. (laughs) So my wife's like, one year. But to be honest, I've heard from teachers over there that the first year of supervised teaching, it just allows you to work with a teacher who knows the ropes and to help you out. It's like a free year of having a helper on board. Yeah. So So can you just, can you just clear that up? What does that mean? You're going to have a one year of supervised clearing. Uh, What does that mean? That means when I get a job, yeah. Um, the school is responsible for pairing me up with another teacher, kind of buddy teaching. Right, right. And he or she or there is to help me see the ropes and teach me the New Zealand curriculum. Um, hopefully a little bit of Maori because I don't speak it, um, you know, and just to help. It's just a helping hand to guide you through. Yeah. Um, but they said, based on my experience, one year should be sufficient. Yeah. So this this type of credential is what we call it in the United States will last five years. And I have five years to work my way and then become a full-fledged New Zealand teacher. Right. Okay. So, I know. Sorry. It's it's a whirlwind. All right. Any hands? No, no. Ryan, back there, do you have any questions? (laughs) No. You know, get back under the bread, Brian. Get back. (laughs) No, no, that's, that's, oh, what, what a journey. So. It it was insane. It was it was, I told my friends, they're like, why, what's going on? I'm like, this is literally like buying a house times five. I can't, I can't equal it to anything else. I mean, it's, it was just nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So uh, have we got the next part of the story or can I ask a question? You can ask a question, then I'll hit what comes next. No, go on. I'm going to sit nicely and listen. Go on. What comes next? All right. So now you're allowed to be a teacher and um, they go, all right go on, Carl, go get a job. And the teaching council will be like, there's plenty of them out there. Go get a job. So there are two ways to find jobs, great ways to find jobs in New Zealand. And I've tried both and I don't have a job yet, but I think I've nailed down what I actually need to do. So most jobs are posted, um, pardon me, under what is called the uh, the Gazette. Um, it's, hold on, let me pull the actual name. It's called gazette.education.gov.nz. But if you just put in the word gazette, G-A-Z-E-T-T-E, and put in um, teaching, it will pull up um, teaching positions all over New Zealand. And if you did what I did, my wife and I hunted around and we found our favorite cities in New Zealand and we started looking around for jobs that way. And I submitted, you know, an application to a job that I wanted over in Tauranga, um, at Mount Monganui because the weather fit us and I like to surf and although you can surf plenty of places in New Zealand and we're like all right here we go and I wrote I wrote this great introduction letter and um, I was waiting on it and three weeks later I didn't even get an interview and I was heartbroken because I'm you know at my school I'm considered a high flyer I've gotten things like teacher of the year in three different cities in the states I'm like at the very least I felt owed an interview but got something to tell you, American teachers. They can't give you an interview if citizens can sufficiently fill the job. And this is very important to understand. So if you go to a highly desirable job, you're not even going to get an interview no matter how good you are. 
because New Zealand needs to, the, t, uh, the schools in New Zealand needs to show that they're giving it to citizens first and immigrants second, which makes a tremendous amount of sense. Um, however, it does limit what jobs you can apply for. Does that make sense, Liz? Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so for not knowing that and tailoring, you know, the perfect introduction letter and getting my CV ready, which is um, New Zealand speak for resume. We call them resumes over here in the States. Um, I put my heart and soul into getting a job at this school. Mm-hmm. You know, I even called the front office staff. I sent pictures of my kids. I was getting buddy-buddy with everyone. I'm like, I'm going to get an interview at the very least. Um, they had a similar school to my own. I'm like, this is this is my school in New Zealand. They have all the same problems. They couldn't offer me an interview. So understand that. I know it's a, it's a, a journey of rejections. Yeah, yeah. We could title this podcast. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to. <laughs> um, but don't lose hope. So someone in your Slack group, um, and I, I should have written down the name. I'm so sorry. Said, Carl, you know, you, we're going through a recruiter. So this is the last site that I'll talk about. Uh, the recruiter that I'm going through is called EP. So, you know, Edward Paul dot education. Um, and it's dot co dot NZ. Uh, but they find jobs at places that have said, we've run our course on flying position. We are now in need of help to fill the job. They don't charge you. So over here in the United States, you know, some people who might help you find a job could possibly charge. They often don't. But this site doesn't charge you. They get paid when they help fill the job. So what this company does says, all right, let's talk. What cities do you want to look from? So let's say, you know, I'm interested in warmer weather. Um, Wellington sounds, not Wellington. That's a windy city and it's cold. Let's say um, I just lost Nelson across the bay, right? Um, Nelson's warm, uh, you know, Auckland, you know, can be warm at times. They at least have warm humid summers, you know, they'll find warmer uh, Hawks Bay might be warm and they'll start putting in a search and basing it down. And they say, all right, um, we have these different positions. Now let's fly your, your resume or CV and start targeting. And don't worry, we're going to get you a job. It may not be the ideal job and it's important, you know, it's important to step back um, as an immigrant and say, look, you might not get the exact job you want. I certainly heard stories about, you know, uh, Ryan, uh, Brian hosing out the inside of containers. I'm sure that wasn't ideal for him, um, you know, but you guys have lived it. You've got to land the job that you've got to land. And, um, you know, I may not get to get my intermediate choice job. I may end up being out of my comfort zone, but, you know, after you serve your time over there and you spend a year or two, then you can apply and you, and it will give you time to look around and find the cities that perhaps you really, you know, um, do want. Um, I might have some bad news for you, Liz. There's a number of positions up in Taranaki that I fit the bill for and they're aiming me your way. So, you no, know, you think I'm a whirlwind you. here. Yeah, I was going to say to you, I hear all these names and I haven't heard New Plymouth. It's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no, no, no. We actually we, we looked very heavily at um, at New Plymouth, and it's it's on our list of like five cities that we've narrowed it down to. Yeah. Um, I live in an area of high traffic. I got to be honest. Auckland is beautiful as it is. Traffic does. I've done it. I've done it my whole life. You know, there's nothing more trafficy than I don't know if you've heard of the 405 or the 101, but I live in some of the more trafficked areas of the world. You know, so. Los Angeles and the Valley is definitely known for its traffic. How long does it so, take you to get to work in the morning? If you were driving to work, how long does it take you to get there? Fortunately, I live very close to work, so I'm 20 minutes away. Um, okay. But my colleagues who only live, you know, 15 miles, if they're in the other direction, hour and a half to go the 15 miles. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. Over here in the States, we don't, oh, sorry, miles, kilometers, right? So yeah, yeah, closer no. to, you know, 22 kilometers. Um, but in the States, we don't say how far things are away by distance. You know, at least in California, we say how much time it will take. So, you know, how long does it take to get to Santa Barbara? Oh, you know, that's an hour from here. That's unless you go on a Friday night. But anyway, um, so they'll help you work out your cities. They won't charge you. Um, They'll help you apply in the process and then you'll have a selection of jobs and then, you know, off you go. 
Mm. Bob's your uncle. Well, that sounds all very exciting. I've got a question, please. Sure. So you said, I might have to do something that puts me out of my comfort zone. Mm. What, what For Brian, that was climbing in a septic tank and hosing out poo. What would be your version of do it? What would be your version of doing something in, out of your comfort zone? Primary. So if I land a primary position, um, I'm basically what we consider over here a multiple subject education, where means I have to plan. That's what Joe does. Yeah. So she's a primary teacher. She teaches, you know, English, mathematics, science. You do a fully kind of, you encompass all the subjects on the same day. Um, I haven't done it before. So thank goodness the council thinks that I should work with someone for a year. You know, um, that would definitely be out of my comfort zone. Would I do it to get over to New Zealand, get my family over there? Absolutely. Um, but that would be me going <laughs> for, yeah. you know, the one to two years before I, I land um, a typical, you know, like, oh, let's play science all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. That's what I wanted to know because I was thinking, I wonder what would put you out your comfort zone. See, I I would think being knowing nothing about teaching, why am I even saying that? Actually, I homeschool for 10 years. So yeah, I was about to I say, you're a teacher. Yeah, I do know what teaching is about. And I find it easier to teach little kids than when they get older. So it's interesting that you should say, you know, primary would be you'd find it a little bit more tricky than than older kids. Or is it just the fact that you're teaching lots of subjects other than just science? It's more the second, you know, the, the smaller kids don't scare me. They're hilarious. They're fun. They're honest as all can be. They're awesome. Um, but it's, it's, it's serving up an entire dish of, of a curriculum and yeah. moving it through. Um, I can do it with help. Um, and, and teaching is teaching, you know, classroom management is a large chunk of teaching, no matter where you go. Um, you know, being able to interact with kids and treat them as people instead of, you know, lesser than which some people, you know, do that's all, that's all in the teaching. Um, but that would be a challenge for me. I, I have the youngest of the single subjects. So I teach intermediate school. So I have, you know, anywhere from 11 to 14 year olds currently I have 13 and 14 year olds mm-hmm. when they all get, you know, like kind of, Oh, whatever. That's the great I teach over here. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah. And then, you know, just, you know what it's like, Liz, you know, we're putting our house up on the market. We're worried yeah. about getting a job. I know what Where it's are we like. going to land? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I'll let you off. Now I know all this. I'll let you off for being a bit hyper when we first started. I'm going to let you off. I'm, uh, you've got every well, thank right. You. You've got every right to be a little bit wired. Yeah. After what you Yeah. It, it's what our house goes on the work in a week and all this going on. And, you know, I have open house on anyway. I've got like 50 things on my plate, um, but I didn't want to pass up the opportunity to go on to your podcast. When I say you and uh, Brian have helped us out, like, you guys are the single greatest resource in moving over to New Zealand, bar none. And any, and I'm telling my friends, and this is, you know, this is the honest truth. When they ask, you know, like you're moving, where are you going? You know, I'm saying we're going to New Zealand. Oh, really? That's wonderful. It's a hundred percent of the time people are like, Oh, New Zealand is the best. Anyone who's been there loves it. Um, they're super, they're super stoked. They're, they're considering it themselves. And whenever they ask, well, where do you start? I direct them straight to your podcast. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Sure, of course. That. I appreciate that. Have you and Chrissy been to New Zealand before? Okay, so no. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh gosh, I've literally typed in, am I insane for moving to a place I've never visited? We haven't, but it's it's not quite our fault. COVID really put a monkey wrench into us moving uh, and us exploring New Zealand. I mean, we were even set to go um, last week, but they pushed it back to May 1st. That was my spring break over here in the States. Um, That does remind me, I missed one kind of critical thing. Because of the hemisphere switch, in the States, we typically start school in August and September. And you guys typically start end of January, beginning of February. Yeah. And that makes for a very important decision for us Northern Hemisphere people. Do you want to finish out the year um, in the States or, you know, England or whatever, which means you end in May or June, and then wait for the majority of the job to be posted, which is in October and November? Or do you want to do partial over here at your job and then cut and run to New Zealand as soon as you get a job offer? And... It's a tricky balancing act. You're going to be 
You're either going to, you could be potentially without work if you leave your job on time. Am I, am I doing a good job of explaining the, diff, the difficulty? You're, you're doing a very good job, Carl. You're doing a perfect okay. job. Okay. So I decided on my end, I'm not going to leave my school high and dry. I'm going to finish out till June and then I'll accept, you know, um, I'll try to find a job then. Good news to Americans and people who don't understand this. Um, the New Zealand teaching population is somewhat migrant and um, teachers get a year maternity leave. So in the States, it's like six, eight weeks. It's terrible. It's one of the reasons people aren't as happy with the States as other places. Um, so it's quite common for a teacher to leave mid-year and they're broken down in terms. So there's 10 weeks and then two weeks off, 10 weeks, two weeks off, 10 weeks, two weeks off, and then 10 weeks in their summer. So you can find midterm positions in New Zealand, and that's important for you to recognize. You can finish out your job in the States or, or England, um, and then you can go and apply to New Zealand and actually find jobs just a few weeks after you have you know, finished your own. Mm -hmm. So I, I did want to state that it's a, it's a marked difference. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Carl. So you're sure all, thing. you're all, you're all qualificationed up now, then you, you're ready to go. All you've got to do is just find a job and not just find a job, but that's what, that's the stage you're at now, is it? Yeah. There's a part two to this conversation, Liz. Um, I'm hoping oh. to come back with a happy face and not be like, so I failed. Um, no, no way. No way. I'd be happy once I've gone through that process to be like, uh, to talk about how many places I applied and and what it's like to you know be brought over. I know schools can be hesitant in hiring migrants, um, you know, but uh, apparently these these companies that help you find a job will walk them through a process. So that's the next chapter is the big job hunt, landing the job, and then making the move to New Zealand and starting the career. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. And you are going to come back and talk about it, but I'm not letting you go yet. Hang on. I haven't finished with you yet. I just want to ask you a few more things. So have you, of course, had, of course. Have you had any interviews in, in New Zealand yet? Not a one. I did the Gazette thing, applying with my heart and soul to the single post. Now I've only had my, my qualification for what, 12 days now. Right. So it's not like I've gone out there and knocked on a lot of doors. Um, but when when I was didn't even get the interview and I called back, uh, the school was kind enough to say, you know, on the DL, the, oh, sorry, on the down low, um, hey, you're not going to get a job in a highly, highly desired position. You've got to find a job where they, they've tried. So I've only applied the one place. So I'm at the very beginning of that next journey. Um, I meet with, uh, I forgot the name already. I meet with uh, ep.education soon. We'll target cities and then outcast the net. Yeah. And I'll drop net resumes like crazy or CVs and uh, cover letters. And then we'll see where we get. You are going to be such a valuable teacher in New Zealand. You really are. You've got so much energy. Thank you. You're just lovely. And it, you, yeah, lucky New Zealand kids that you're going to be coming and teaching them. And yeah, just. I wish you very kind of you to say all the luck in the world. Well, you don't need it. You're going to, you, you've done the hard part, Carl, haven't you? I mean, that was the hard part getting through that paperwork. Absolutely. That, that was, that was nuts. Yeah. But, but now, and I think, do you know, you said something earlier and I thought you'll succeed in New Zealand because that's the way to do it. When you said I got in touch with the reception staff and, you know, I was showing them photos of my kids and it was like, just keep doing that path because Kiwis, they they appreciate that so much. They they that connection, getting to know you as a person rather than, oh yeah, I've got this credential, this credential. As soon as they meet you, honestly, as soon as they meet you, I know I'm not the only one out there thinking this. They're gonna go, Yep, yeah, we want this guy. So you're gonna be you're gonna Thank have you so a, much for saying so. You're gonna have a list of job offers. <laughs> I hope so. And uh, as I said, um beware because one of them might be New Plymouth. And then what are you going to do, Liz? I'm going to be knocking on the door, sitting on the couch, watching Liverpool games with Brian in her jerseys and not going to get rid of me. Do you support Liverpool? You do, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've, I've been supporting them for, for 25 years now. Yeah. I just oh. landed on the team. But um, oh. yeah, go Reds. Well, I, and you did say something earlier that sparked my interest. You said, I'm going to crack open the martinis. I thought, well, this guy can be my friend then. <laughs> Him and Chrissy, they're welcome. Welcome in this house. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll have we'll have a great time. So, 
So yeah, and you've got a you've got a trip coming up in a few days, right? We have, yeah. We leave on Sunday to go to Europe. So by the time this show goes out, we will be in Europe. Um, you know, swanning around and uh, <laughs> videoing oh. it all, hopefully, and bringing it to everyone. But but I was that's going to be amazing. I don't know if you followed our our last podcast, but th- you know what, Carl? I don't know what it is because oh. New Zealand at the moment couldn't be, for us personally, I'm talking, for me and Brian and my family, it couldn't be more perfect. It's just, you know, when everything is just lovely and and you don't want to do anything to to disrupt it because you're like, I love my life at the moment. I just love, I've got a great community on on our, our Slack group. I've got a great community on YouTube. I've got, you know, it's just, and I almost just don't want to step out of New Zealand, but I know that Obviously, I know that we're going to come back, but it's just, I don't know. I feel like I'm a bit of a, a bit like a kid being sent on a trip that I don't really, I, I'm not really bothered about going on, like, you know, and that sounds really ungrateful because I know that it's going to be an amazing trip, but New Zealand is such a special place. It's not, you know, like sometimes when you go on a holiday, yeah, I can't wait to get out of this place. I can't stand it. Like, you know, just let me on that plane and let me get out of here. That's how I used to feel when I don't, I don't mean to be a mean, but that's how I'd feel when I was in the UK and we'd be going away on the holiday. I'd be like, oh, thank God, like, you know, just let me get out of this place. And New Zealand is kind of the opposite. You know, it's just like, oh, really? Do I have to? Oh, okay then. That, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I can't wait. I, I really can't wait. Yeah. Um, you guys are going to have a great trip. And and I don't mean to plug the Slack group as much as, uh, you know, I did, I did oh. earlier, but I have to tell yeah. anyone who's listening, in the process of trying to move to New Zealand, there is nothing more valuable than just shouting out and saying, hey, what did you guys do for movers? Or, hey, what do I do in this situation? Has anyone been in this place? And you basically have all the answers at your fingertips. And I don't know where else in the world you can go for it. Your Slack group is crazy amazing. And, you know, you always talk about be the help that, you know, you needed. Um, you guys are doing it. And it's the whole reason I wanted to do this podcast with you. It's I just wanted people to have that kind of walk through step process so they understand it and and it can be smoother for them. Oh, I really appreciate that. I really, really appreciate you saying that because I I, I know I, I just love that group so much and it's just, they're just very like-minded, very supportive. And, and also Carl, I just want to go right back at you and just say, you, you know, you've just, you, this is going to be such a valuable podcast. I know that we said at the beginning, Oh, I don't know if we'll put it on YouTube. This is going on YouTube without a doubt. This is going on YouTube because this is just such valuable information. If you are in the process of thinking, well, uh, you know, I'm a teacher and how do I even start? You've just covered it so clearly and lovely. And I just want to say thank you so much. Absolutely. Anytime. Yeah. And you promise you'll come back for part two and tell us about the job and everything like that. I will come back when I have the job offer and we're on the next stage helping people out to get there. Okay. That sounds fantastic. All right then. So until then, I'll speak to you soon. And thanks again, Carl. Thanks, Liz. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast this week. We have loved having you here with us. If you love this week's show, please share this with your friends. Send it to anybody you know that wants to think about moving to New Zealand and get on over here yourself. Tell them how brilliant it is as well. And also, if you haven't signed up for our free five-day video guide showing you what life is like, really like, in New Zealand, then go over to the website and sign up. You are missing out. This is brilliant. Go over to www nz ahead slash free and we will send you five days worth of videos about what life is like in New Zealand. You are going to love it. So one more time, that website that you need to sign up for the free five-day guide is www.nz ahead slash free. So we're going to see you next week. Until then, have a great week and we'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Say bye again. Bye. Bye. <laughs>